Our Arrowhead Property Fund plans to buy the units of Vividend Income Fund, which it doesn't yet own. And Arrowhead Chief Operating Officer Mark Kaplan joins us now for more. Hi, Mark. Uh, give us the landscape of this deal, the two companies, and uh, tell us the story of what's happening here. So what we had was a lot of listings, really, in the property sector over the last few years. And people have been speaking of consolidation starting. But I think everyone knew that consolidation was next to follow. But I think the, the real trigger was really... A, uh, a rise in the cost of capital and debt, or equity and debt, you know, 70, call it 75% of the, the funds that we, that we raise are equity and 25% debt. And there's been a significant increase in that since May last year when Ben Bernanke spoke about, uh, uh, you know, tapering off on the quantitative easing. And since then, really, the cycle began slowly. And what you've seen now in the last couple of months is a lot of the better performing listed property funds looking to acquire their peers. Mm. You've used really interesting um, terminology in your press release. You say you have a firm intention. Um, one then uh, deduces from this that there must be other processes or hurdles that are still need to be cleared yes. before this deal is finalized. Is there anything significant that you have to contend with? So just to give you a little bit of a, 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 a little bit about the deal, we, we, we acquired 31.7% in December from Coronation on a share swap basis, where we issued new shares to Coronation and they took shares within Arrowhead. We then did a deal with uh, Stanlib, whereby we've got an irrevocable for them to support a scheme of arrangement, um, which will go to Vividend unit holders. Really what we need to do is with the remaining 100% uh, less 31.7%, we need to get 75% of that to effectively take over the whole of, of Vividend. We've got Stanlib to support a third of that. There are 22% of the current total, which would be 22 out of the remaining 68-odd uh, percent. Wayne, you got your yeah. eye on this? Mark, when you look at the property uh, uh, field now, exactly as you said, cost of capital is up. Share prices have reversed quite dramatically, so it's not really worthwhile issuing equity now. But yet property prices haven't really moved yet. So when you go and buy a property, you can look at your funding structures, but when you look at the asking yield that, that the seller wants, the two just don't make sense. Do you think the physical property prices are going to come under a bit of pressure? Because quite frankly, it's not economical to go and buy one now. I think that's exactly what's going to happen, and I think we're starting to, to see the beginnings of it now. Really, what, what's happened is the disciplined property companies will adjust their acquisition yields, their requirements. So our cost of capital has moved about 200 basis points, so we will, we're looking at, at, at yields higher than we were before. Our acquisition yield always has to be higher than our, our, our cost of funding. And I think that you're seeing that the ones that haven't been disciplined, disciplined with that either have very slow distribution growth or are actually being swallowed by, by their peers. Liston? Yeah, I guess the, the whole story of property is tied into the interest rate pattern. And we've certainly seen you know, quite, a, quite a knock being taken in, the, in that area. But it's been growing enormously. I mean, I can go back only a few years, and I don't think we even had one mm. property company uh, knocking on the door of the or, or Z40. And now we have a number that have uh, significant market capitalizations. So again, is market capitalization something that's driving this? I think it's important for, for funds to be liquid, and the larger your, your market cap is, generally the more liquid you are. So I think, I think what you're seeing now is that, that the investors are becoming more selective with which, which funds they would like to, to invest in. And what's happening is the less liquid funds are going to be swallowed by the more liquid yeah. funds, bigger funds, better performing funds. Just give us a picture of uh, Vividend and why you want it. What does it do? So first of all, you know, Arrowhead buys stuff that's yield enhancing, that our, our acquisition yields higher than our cost of funding. We were able to do that with Vividend. Vividend's got a better quality portfolio than Arrowhead, so not only are we able to buy something on a yield enhancing basis that, that will you know, provide good returns for our shareholders, we're able to improve the quality of our existing portfolio. It's about 50% retail, 50% office. Uh, one major asset, which is 25% of their assets, is Access Park in Cape Town, uh, a tremendously performing asset. Mm. Where do you see most of your growth coming from uh, in the future? Is it going to be retail or office? Which one are you leaning towards? For us, we don't really focus on any particular sector. We've even gone into residential at the moment. We just, we're just we opportunistic in terms of making sure that we acquire at the right yield. How do you go into residential? I mean, what, you can't <coughs> buy a house. Uh, lots of houses. How do you do it? So, so what we've done is we've, we've bought our first acquisition was um, we bought a lease from Monash, a two-year lease from Monash. Um, we bought that from Standard Bank. It was $150 million in Honey Park on a 12% net yield after that. And we've also bought a portfolio of 31 buildings from Jika. 
um, and that's, that's a portfolio of 366 million odd. I've thought that residential property has been totally underrepresented in South Africa as an investment for listed companies. It's individuals who buy houses. Is that changing? I think, I think it will change. I think if you look overseas, that 10 to 15 percent of the listed property sector in the developed economies, that residential is 10 to 15 percent of those economies. Here we're looking at sub 1 percent. And I think recently what you've seen is we've, we've started, you've got Octodec and Premium before us, mm -hmm. and then what you've got recently is SA Corporate also looking to come into to residential. So I think what you are going to see over the next few years is residential becoming a bigger percentage of the total. Mm -hmm. Yeah, look, I think, it's, I think that's quite logical. You know, the bigger, op the bigger property companies can develop probably at, an, at a lower cost of capital, which means their units will ultimately be more competitive and on a more professional basis. I mean, obviously, there are big residential property developers, but a lot of residential property, if not the majority, is literally the bucky builder, one or two houses, you know, a person will buy it, never finished property, they never got recourse. The, the build is always short of money. So it's actually a lot of our house building is actually, I wouldn't even call it semi-professional, it's actually relatively amateur. Mm. So I think there is a big space because you can come in and do, uh, uh, do, do at a lower cost and probably a better quality. But there is some large resident, there are some large residential developments in the pipeline now. And I, I would sit back a little bit and wait. But certainly when you look at waterfall, or you look at some of the really big established residential units, they're actually incredibly successful. Mm. I, mean, I can just come in as well. I think you know, one of the problems we have in South Africa on residential is indeed you know, the, the, the kinds of things we had back in the 60s of rent control. It's still very present in India. Mm. Uh, and, and I think anybody who look, goes into that must look forward for some time. Mm. Oh, either you sell off the units individually, which is obviously one of the, one of the tricks that you can in, in, indulge in, but where you've got you know, large blocks that you intend to hold, rent control, government interference, the problems of protection of the tenants these days, difficulties of eviction. I, I, I don't want to paint, paint a nasty picture, but it, it do, would not be my first port of call, although I actually am a landlord in my own right, so I know these problems. <laughs> you have painted a nasty picture. That's okay. Mark, thank you so much for joining us.